Today we have an SQ80 on the bench. A Crossway synthesizer made by Insonics. That's going to get a minor fix and a bit of an upgrade. Part one of the upgrade is going to be to replace the floppy drive. Extra patches would normally be stored in floppy disks. But we're going to swap out the old drive for an emulator that will allow me to use the USB drives. For the repair part, the SQ80 is going to get a new battery. So for that, I have the new battery here along with the holder and some leads. The final part of the upgrade will be to the firmware, which will be done by popping these two chips in place of the old ones. To begin, we'll remove the four hex screws holding down the control panel. Once they're removed, we can flip up the control panel. I use a small pry tool to help get started. First look inside, we get an idea of how filthy it is. I tried to remove some of the dust with my finger to discover that it's actually baked on. To get to the floppy drive, we need to remove four screws holding the wheel assembly in place. There are two in the bottom of the front, and two more in the back. These are the two in the front. And these are the two in the back. Once all four screws have been removed, the wheel assembly can be taken out. Oh, and it looks like some dust bunnies have made this place home. Moving forward, to get the floppy drive out, I'm going to begin by removing the four screws that mount it to the wheel assembly. I also removed one of the connectors to get easier access to some of the screws. Carefully wiggle the drive out of place and finally disconnect the ribbon cable. A little bit of cleaning off before moving on. Prior to mounting the replacement, it might be a good idea to plug everything in and give it a test run. Quick boot up shows that everything works all right. Downside of this upgrade is that it isn't a perfect fit. There's a large gap on the top and some on the sides. I would recommend filling these spaces to keep dust from entering in the synth. I've heard some people using some foam strip, but I'm sure there's some other great ways to do it as well. Part two of the upgrade will be installing these two chips. But first, the main board shield needs to be removed. It's held in place with four screws to the bottom and two more to the left hand side. Some connectors will need to be removed to lift the shield out of place. The ribbon connector for the cartridge port can be removed by unscrewing two screws that mount it to the control panel. With the shield out of the way, we can now see the two socketed chips that need to be replaced, as well as the battery that we'll take care of later. The chip labeled upper will be installed on the left, and the one labeled lower will be installed on the right. The board is also labeled high and low, high being upper and low being lower. Once the old chips are removed, be cautious when installing the replacements. The pins on mine weren't quite a perfect alignment for the socket, and they had to be shaped a bit before they fit. Lastly, we'll replace the battery. 
I marked the board to remember the polarity, but once the battery is removed, we'll see that this isn't necessary as the board has labeling hidden underneath the battery. I'm choosing the approach of removing the battery by leaving the board still installed in an attempt to avoid going through the hassle of removing the board. I cut the old battery so it isn't in the way, and now we only have two soldered in pins that need to be removed. Using a desoldering braid, flux, an iron, and a bit of help with some tweezers, they'll come out. Be careful with the iron though, there is that ribbon cable in close proximity, and the chassis is also made of plastic. Moving on, the new leads will now be installed. After that, I prep the battery socket to have the leads soldered to them. I do this by adding a bit of solder onto each end of the socket, starting with the positive end. The lead is then pretty much just tapped into place. Repeat the process for the other end. And the battery socket is now attached to the main board. The underneath of the battery socket had two metal prongs that protruded out, so I cut them back and applied some liquid tape to cover them up. I did this so I could apply some velcro on the back so it could be mounted onto the chassis. With the velcro now on, I look around for a place to mount it. I keep it close to where it originally was because we need to keep in mind that it still needs to fit underneath the shield that's going to be reinstalled later. Quickly checking out the fit before continuing, and everything looks all right. I went back and decided to put a twist tie around the battery. I had a fear that it may pop out when I was moving around the synth. Time to wrap things up and put it all back together. One more boot up to test the things all right. And they are. We got rid of that battery warning. And that's it for this one. Thanks again for watching, and have fun tinkering.